Um, my name's Anthony, uh, in case that wasn't clear. I'm from GigOwl, and uh, what we do is we connect musicians and venues and fans. There's a bit of a, a three-way thing going on there. It's probably a joke um, in there somewhere. <laughs> um, we actually came on board this accelerator with a vision of we're going to have a marketplace. We're going to make it really easy for musicians to get gigs. And, and, and we realized actually that's a really difficult thing to do because marketplaces need seeding. And seeding is a pain in the area of uh, So OK, what did we do? We started asking questions of, uh, to the venues. How are we going to be beneficial to you? What are you looking for? And uh, does anyone, anyone know what venues look for, really? You know, whether they're music venues or not? So that they want bums on seats. They want people in the doors. Um, because they make money like that. And musicians, what do musicians want? They want, they want gigs. You, know, you offer a, a sniff of a gig to a musician, they'll take your hand off. And uh, fans fan to, tend to you know, follow a, a musician around. They want to support their musicians. So we thought, well, rather than this marketplace thing, can we look back on what we used to do, which is around social engagement and marketing, and apply that into an instance of, you know, a site, a platform to grow from. So we did. We found a use case. We found uh, the Tramlines Festival. It's happening up in Sheffield. If no one's heard of the Tramlines Festival, it's like a street festival, the equivalent of Glastonbury in size. And uh, we're actually working with, with them as a partner for a gig. And they're going to use our system to pick musicians that are going to play. Um, why are they doing that? Because reputation's a bit of an issue when it comes to booking musicians. We're not talking about the, the, uh, the top end musicians here, but we're talking about actually giving people with talent a chance. And musicians need to play. Venues don't want to be booking people just playing to another musician because it doesn't really pay for the electricity and things involved. So let me show you what we got here. Our system creates a networking effect. It creates a engagement effect. We do this through social voting. Now, me as a user, I follow Fitz. You may not have heard of Fitz. You should. They just said, OK, lovely people. We really like to play Tramlines Festival. It's coming up. We need your help. Why do we need your help? Because if you check out the lineup page, you need to vote for us so that we get into the the slots. Now there's three, four slots available. We might not be inside that, but with your help as a fan, we can vote them up. So I'm a fan. I want to vote. I want to support Fitz. Simple as that. We've actually voted. Now, as a user, I'd hit this page and I'm now actually engaged with this festival's happening. I know when it is. I know who's playing, who's potentially playing. Some other artists that I may not have actually encountered before. Um, because it's the right type of genre um, that for fits, I'm seeing all the other artists that are trying to apply who might be in a similar role, and I can listen to those guys. I'm discovering artists at the same time. For the venue, they're actually getting a lineup curated for them because they're seeing popularity, they're seeing engagement from active fans and followers. So they're not going to end up with a, a venue that's empty. They're actually going to have people turn up. They're going to have people buy their beer. And rather than actually having the, the three people they may have approached to play as a support for Frank Turner, they're actually getting a great number of musicians who really want to play this gig applying, creating engagement to their fans way earlier on than they would do. So we're having this knock-on effect, this ripple through social media and uh, all the other channels that musicians may utilize to increase their, their standpoint in the lineup. So it works really nicely. Um, we want to take this a lot higher. We want to use this on as many festivals as possible. This is seed in our marketplace. You know, we, we have many visions of how we can actually use this in the future, but this is one product that we're utilizing <coughs> because we have this use case. We've been lucky enough to work with the Tramlines Festival. And uh, this is kicking off in, in Sheffield um, from the 19th to the 21st. So, you know, it's actually worth a trip up there because beer's really cheap up north and uh, there's some great music happening. 
Um, although we can't compete with free beer, but you know, speak to me afterwards and we'll see what we can do in the door. Um, what do we want from yourselves? I mean, I didn't show you a lot of the, the user flow there. Um, we've been really meticulous in terms of we don't want people signing up and filling in more profile information. So we need to make it as, as quick and simple as possible. Um, I want to vote, okay, I can sign in with Facebook or I can actually just use my, my normal details. We did the same thing with, with musicians. So we extract from SoundCloud and, and Twitter as much information as possible to make sure they don't have to manage all these different profile accounts. And uh, we can take a lot of information out of that for, for speeding things up and actually giving insights to the promoters further down the line. Um, what I'd love to know from you guys is what are we not seeing here? What do you think should be changed on this screen, on this interface? Uh, what as fans do you want to engage with, with the musicians? What would be really nice? Because, you know, aside from, from getting gigs, um, musicians want engagement with their fans. Whether it's intimate or global, it doesn't matter because it helps them believe in what they're doing. And uh, we believe in what we're doing. So, Feedback, please. Okay, round of applause for you. How are you going to stop me creating 5,000 accounts and voting for To Kill a King to get them to the top? Would you really like To Kill a King I to get to the top? To Brilliant, okay. Um, so it's not just ambiguous voting. You can vote once per account, but as you say, you may just create a dozen accounts, we can see who's voting for who. Um, so we've got active lock-ons that, that detect, you know, is, is something happening here? We've, we've come from a background where social voting, social uh, engagement systems like this have that. Um, a lot of the people we've spoken to on the management side of things actually don't care too much about it because it shows that people are really getting involved and really trying to cheat a system. And if people are trying to cheat a system, then there's something to look into. But um, great question. And there's only a certain number of things we can do without manual intervention. So if you have any ideas on, on that, or if anybody else knows a really cheap way of doing it, then we'd love to speak to you. But um, yeah, we, we are prepared for that. We do understand that that may happen, but it's a case of intervention. Okay. I think what we also can see is you could, as a fan, if you're on engagement, if you could choose like the on call song they're going to play or vote on that, like the top five songs, just kind of to, to engage the, the fans even more. Yeah. I think we could do more voting like that. I think that would be really cool. That's a great suggestion. Yeah. It's interesting that radio didn't play Cream for ages because they were just fed up playing. It would have been number one on everybody's list. The fans might have liked that. It's a good idea. Hi. Um, a couple of things that pop out from the management folks. Firstly, there's no indication there's any money behind the votes. So you might get a lot of people who just kind of think they're assisting a band they like by voting them onto a festival that they may have no capacity to go to. Um, and secondly, from a, uh, a fan and a band point of view, the band doesn't get a lot of promotion from doing this, and the fan doesn't get a lot of engagement. And I think you could very easily add extra stuff in. So, for example, you can go from this when you voted to, or you can see, for example, your Facebook friends that like the band or you can see the band like them or their sound card or whatever. So just give a bit more depth, some more reason to go there because quite frankly, unless I'm going to go and pass my boat, I wouldn't really want to bother. But I think you might get a lot more engagement. Yeah, oh, that's a great point, Andrew. Um, we are looking into building that through so when you're actually going to vote or you have voted, you can see other people who have voted, whether it's your friends or not. And um, one of the things we were looking into is rewards, so kickbacks for actually voting for the musicians that you're actually getting involved with, so they can give kickbacks to you as an incentive, as part of that drive that you would claim when you turn up at the gig. Why don't you go with like a sort of Kickstarter kind of model where if the act gets, I don't know, 100 people that buy a ticket in advance and yeah. they get to play, and if they don't get to 100, they get their money back? That's, that's a brilliant idea. If you want to buy 10 tickets, you buy 10 tickets. Yeah. But that way you're guaranteeing the, the people are going to actually go there. Yeah. Or if they don't go there, it doesn't matter too much because they've already paid. It's a brilliant, brilliant idea, and uh, I wish I'd thought of it sooner because Songkick actually released that 
two weeks ago. Um, Songkick allow you to do that. They're coming in at the other end of the spectrum. Um, so they are really addressing the fans and, and getting them to put the money where their mouth is. Um, this is about creating more engagement for something you may not have actually known about. But maybe we'll incorporate that. There's no reason why we can't do both. And it's a good model. Question here. Um, kind of uh, going on what you said as well, off-site voting as well, an off-site interaction. Yep. I'm playing, I'm playing tonight at King's Aid. None of my fans ever know anything about this. Um, but I still want them to go over here and vote. I don't want to keep going, oh, I mean, I've got to tell you, I've got to remember the URL. You're never going to remember it. Uh, which kind of leads into a product that I've built a while ago, which is QR voting. So you print it out, stick it wherever you like, people can vote straight away. Sure. Uh, it's kind of interesting in that. Great idea. Um, Did you just pitch? <laughs> <laughs> Great. That's the idea. Some, something physical in the, in the, in the venue to, to help. Yeah, that's a really good like, on-site on location to build people up. Um, great idea. One of the things we want to do is give it more exposure, so not just having it on our site, but putting it in, in other places like widgets where they can drop it on their site, ways that they can interact with the offline online um, mechanism, uh, even Facebook pages, having a tab which shows where you're going to be playing and you know, the assistance that's needed. Um, in the future, that'd be great to move towards, but we're trying to also build up our presence as the, the go-to place at the moment and as a brand awareness. So at the moment, it all filters through here, but yeah, um, naturally. I think it's a great idea, by the way. I think you've got real potential to develop this into something that's unique. You've got, you've got this sort of need, I think, when you think about bands who are not known, as you say, and you think about the number of venues out there, not just festivals, but venues generally across any city, not really sure whether to take a chance on a band or not. So I think you, you've got it, you may have already got it in the pipeline or developed it already, but you, know, you do need the further engagement. People come up with some ideas here. You need the pages on your side, I would say, or each of the bands, so they develop that connection with you. You want to keep those bands honest and loyal to you, I think. And same with the other spectrum, the actual, you know, the, the, the fans do the same thing there. And I think on, on festivals, what if you were the festival organizer, what you would love to know is that that voting is genuine. So rather than saying a member has one vote, I would go a step further and say, actually, if you are already someone who's bought a ticket and you can have an identifier attached to that, you vote on the basis of that. I think that then shows the, the person who's you know, organizing the festival, that actually there's a genuine reason why you might do that. So you bought your ticket, maybe that's too late, I don't know, but you, you can, you can see a scenario where real intention and expression of interest to go to the, the festival is some sort of trigger to be able to vote there. Yeah. And similarly, the venues, I think, generally. Um, but I, I think it's a great idea in terms of connecting people and, you know. That's, again, another good point. 